Welcome to Argos, traveler. My name is Herodotus, and I am a traveler from Harikanassus. I retrace the cause of various events, such as wars and great calamities. I describe what I see and record what I'm told, all with the aim of providing a better understanding of why these things occur. Look for me to introduce you to many sites. I always admired the dedication of Greek metal workers. Without them, we would not have the inspiring monuments that stir the hearts of Greek citizens everywhere. This is Argos, one of the oldest cities in Greece. The Argives were an ingenious people, famous for innovations in areas like military tactics. However, what they were most renowned for was their metallurgic artistry, especially with bronze. I hope you enjoy yourself. Look for me at the end of your visit. The area that would become Argos was inhabited as early as the 3rd millennium BCE, but it was in the 7th century BCE that it officially became a city-state. One of Argos's major pillars was its metallurgical industry. As far back as the 8th century BCE, the city was famed for making products like long dress pins and tripod cauldrons, as well as impeccable body armor. In addition to their technical excellence, the Argives were also creative, as seen in their masterful bronze sculpting, which became prominent in the city during the 6th and 5th century BCE. Bronze is an alloy composed of 90% copper and 10% tin. Because of this, copper and tin needed to be smelted and combined to create the material needed for sculpting. After the bronze alloy was formed, it was melted in special furnaces. They required a tremendous amount of fuel and were usually supplied with charcoal made from specific types of wood. It's possible they were also coated with a protective lining of clay which would have been sensible given the melting point of bronze is approximately 950 degrees Celsius. Once the bronze was melted and collected, the furnaces were dismantled and dumped. In the 8th century BCE, most small-scale statues were molded using a complicated and lengthy method 
called solid lost wax casting. From the 7th century BCE onwards, metal workers adopted the more efficient hollow lost wax casting. At its core, this process involved using sculpting models from wax, making molds over these models, then filling the molds with bronze to produce the desired shapes. The process was advantageous because it saved on materials, produced lighter statues, and reduced the chance of possible defects. Once all the pieces of the sculpture were molded, they were welded together and subjected to the cold working process. This process involved repairing the sculpture's flaws by filling any holes and cracks with specifically measured bronze patches. Afterwards, the sculpture was scraped, chiseled and polished until it was deemed satisfactory. Decorative details like hair, eyebrows and moustaches were added with the use of a sharp tool. Eyes which could be inset with ivory, glass or silver, were attached to their sockets using a resinous kind of glue. Teeth and fingernails were inlaid with silver and lips and nipples with copper. These small touches added color and contributed to the sculpture's lifelike appearance. Bronze sculptures have a long and varied history in Greece. During the geometric period of 900 to 700 BCE, the sculptures mainly depicted idealized heroes, charioteers, and horses, and most of them were dedicated to sanctuaries. The orientalizing period followed in the 7th century BCE. During this time, Greeks began adopting sculpting techniques from the east and the depicted statues expanded to include mythological creatures like griffins and sphinxes. The archaic period saw statues that reflected a better understanding of human anatomy, which eventually culminated in the realistic and powerful human sculptures of the Hellenistic period. Argos was the home of Polykleitos, one of the most famous sculptors in ancient Greece. His works, like the Doriphorus and Diadomenos, as well as his treatise on sculpting called the Canon, had a massive impact on the art as a whole, particularly in regards to ideal body proportions. Sadly, 
the original versions of Polyclitos' sculptures have been lost, along with most bronze statues from antiquity. As time went on, many bronze statues were melted down to be recycled in things like weapons, ammunition, and even church bells. Because of this, marble copies from the Roman period are our best evidence of the masterpieces of Greek sculpture. I see you have completed your tour. I trust you have a new appreciation for Greek sculptures after learning of the heart and soul that was poured into each step of their creation. Now, what else would you like to do? Then let us dive right in. Here is your first question. Which era of sculpting came first? The Hellenistic period began in 323 BCE, following several other eras. Try again. The Orientalizing period lasted for most of the 7th century BCE. It introduced Eastern sculpting techniques to the Greek world. But it was not the earliest era. Try a different answer. The classical period lasted from 480 to 323 BCE, making it relatively new in the grand scheme of things. But please, try another answer. Correct. The geometric period lasted from 900 to 700 BCE and mostly featured small-scale statues and statuettes of heroes and horses. On to the second question. Bronze was an alloy composed of which two metals? Copper and zinc made up brass, not bronze. Try another answer. Combining copper and gold did not form bronze. Instead, it merely gave the gold a rosy tint. Try another answer. Silver and gold produced an alloy called electrum. Keep trying. Yes. To get the bronze required for sculpting, metal workers first needed to smelt copper and tin. One last question for you. Which renowned sculptor was a native of Argos? Miron was an Athenian sculptor. Try again. Praxiteles was originally from Athens. Keep trying. No, Scorpas was born on the island of Paros. Try a different answer. Yes, Polyclitos was based in Argos and had an enormous impact on the art of sculpting. You've done well, traveler. Your knowledge of metalwork is astounding. Then, farewell, traveler. May we meet again soon.